the <laughs> Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott may want to put the brakes on Cooper Mania. Cooper Rush is now 3-0 and as a starter, dating back to last year in prime time against the Vikings. He has another prime time win over the New York Giants on Monday night. Dak Prescott, and this came up during the broadcast. Lisa Salters was talking about her conversation with Dak Prescott. He had the stitch. It was one long stitch removed from the incision where he had surgery to repair the broken bone above his thumb. He hasn't ruled out coming out sooner than later. He also hasn't ruled out playing week four. Nothing heals that thumb faster than Cooper Rush making throws like that. It reminds me of last year when Geno Smith had a really good game against the Jaguars for the Seahawks. The next week, Russell was back. Yeah, right. And I don't know that it's smart. And all that noise last week from Jerry Jones about yeah. having a dilemma. I uh, want, you, I want a dilemma, right? Yeah. Yeah, between Cooper Rush and Dak Prescott, what does that do? That that applies subtle or not so subtle pressure or subtle pressure on Dak Prescott to come back before he's ready, to push to come back. Do you really want to do that, Jerry? Do you really want Dak Prescott back before he's ready because you're spouting off about the possibility of Cooper Rush taking over the job? That's just lunacy. I mean, it's it's funny when it happens and it gets us talking about the Cowboys, but when you think about the impact it has psychologically on Dak Prescott and what it will do to get him to maybe come back before he's ready, that hurts the team if he's not ready. Again, it all comes down to what percent do you want your starter at where it's preferred to having a 100% healthy backup? Well, that number's higher if Cooper Rush is getting it done. And now Dak's going to Dak's going to press, and he's going to push. He doesn't want to stand on the sidelines and watch the team win. Who wants to do that? They're going to, you know, no, they keep right. winning. They keep winning. Well, I'm just standing here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm yelling at the guys, and I'm not in uniform, and there's nothing I can do. He wants to get back and play, and I think he'll be back by week five. I think we'll definitely see him by Sunday night week six when they play the Eagles. I think he'll definitely be back by then. But he may be back week five. I think they have the Rams week five. But You're right. I, I don't I don't see it. I don't see it this weekend. And if it happens, it will just underscore what a mistake it was for Jerry Jones to talk about having a dilemma between his two quarterbacks. Well, I, I I'm with you there. Like, first off, why rush it? Why risk the rest of the season, right? I mean, we know that. And I mean there's no there's no teams that we look at right now that we go, Oh, they're gonna run away with, you know, the NFC and you might get left in the dust as far as playoffs are concerned. I mean you know, we know Philadelphia is really good in the NFC East and they want to keep pace with them. I get that. But, you know, and then, you know, you make the point, too, of it's Washington next week who hasn't been playing very well. You know, why rush it there? Right. Give it all the time it can. Again, it's not about the end of September, early October. We want to it's about December and January. But Jerry seems like he's been pushing this from the get go. I mean, it was, you know, I, I listen, I've been around the league and football and the thumb and. I think we and most medical professionals, everybody, when they heard that injury, yeah, that might be six to eight weeks, five to eight weeks. And I know we're not experts, but we've all been around the league and the game a little bit. Thumbs very important throwing. And Jerry literally, like the next day, was like, hey, the surgery's good. It looks like he might be back in three or four weeks. We're not going to put him on IR. It, it seems like he's putting, put, putting the pressure on him from the start, really. So I'm, I'm with you amazing. there, Mike. I know. Amazing how that timeline dramatically shifted from what we thought it was in the aftermath of the Monday night opener against or Sunday night, excuse me, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. And there's just been that sense of we want him back, we want him back. We and paid you all this you money. You got hurt last year. You know, we you need exactly. you, you know, it's all it's a little of that pressure, right? That's, that's what I feel at least. Not only did we give you all this money, but you took all this money. Right. You you had us over a barrel and you took full advantage of it. And we're still not happy about it. And I wonder how much of that creeps into the attitude. I'm with you. That, I'm with you. That, that we got pushed into doing what we thought was a bad deal, right. $40 million a year on a four-year contract, where as a practical matter, they have to renegotiate after year three, or he's walking out the door after year four, or at least hitting the open market yeah. and having his value set there. I'm sure there's still some lingering resentment. And, and what do you do, Chris, if he comes back and – He's healthy enough to play, but he's not playing well. Like last year when Russell Wilson wasn't himself again. What, what do you do at that point? You can't take him out once he's back in. Not really, no. You gotta you're let him, right. you gotta, so that's the old Dennis Green 100% rule. Right. I remember he did it in 1998 with Brad Johnson and Randall Cunningham. Johnson breaks his 
lower leg, week two against the Rams. Cunningham comes in and has a career rebirth. Guy was out of football for all of the 1996 season, was a backup of the Vikings in 97, and took the league by storm in 98. So when's Brad Johnson coming back? When he's 100%. He's our starting quarterback, and he plays when he's 100%. And he never played again, except maybe in some some garbage time later yeah, in the year. Yeah, real Brad late Cunningham, in the year. like had a knee thing. Nothing much from Brad Johnson the rest of the year, and he was never 100% enough to be the starter again. Now, you can't do that. You can't. You can't do that with Dak Prescott, but you can at least give him the full allotment of time necessary to recover from this thumb surgery. We're not saying keep him on the bench until Thanksgiving. We're just saying make, make sure he's healthy and, and let and let this hot hand. You got a hot hand. The dice are hot with Cooper Rush. Keep That's rolling right. them. Right. Win a game here, win a game there, and then you'll know when to bring Dak Prescott back. So I, I just I think that this is just going to be harder to do with each passing week. With each passing win, it's going to be harder to keep Dak Prescott out. Yeah, it, it, it does. It seems that way. Yeah, one, him personally, two, Jerry Jones. And I think you're right. I think all those politics and, and hey, facts of the matter that, hey, uh, we pay our stars. We paid you after your, you know, your right foot was turned right, right, uh, you know, sideways on the football field. We still invested in you. You know, I think there's all of that. They, they, they push their team that way. They do. But you're right. You just want to be careful here. You do. You don't want to rush him back. And, you know, we've discussed that before. Like you said, the 100% rule or even, you know, what I've seen in my time in the NFL or New England, the New England, I always bow to them and what they do in their process. You know, they'd have guys hurt. I know it's not the quarterback, but let them practice a little bit. Get a week of practicing without having to play so we can get used to the movements and things like that. I would think that's something you want to do as far as, hey, throwing the football. They're going to need Dak Prescott. And we know that. They are. You know, again, Cooper Rush is very good. I'm really happy for him. There's no doubt the team's playing well around him. But he's not making any plays to where we go, oh, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They wouldn't be winning this game if it weren't Cooper Rush. No. There were some opportunities there in the first half. You know, I know they were up 6-3, but there was a few plays and third downs where I went, man, that that guy was open. Like if Dak Prescott was in there, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that would have been as good for the Giants. I don't think that would have been knocked up in the air, you know, just as the ball got there. So the, he's going to take over some games at some points and do some things that Cooper Rush is not capable of. But right now, you're right. Ride the hot wave. They're playing balanced football. The defense has got it going. You know, don't don't rush it and then set the team back and and kind of lose your mojo. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.